welcome to the Discount Property Investor Podcast, where we show you how to buy real estate at a discount so you can create wealth over time and income today. Our mission is to share what we have learned from the experience of others and help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate, the Discount Property Investor way. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back, guys. This is a Discount Property Investor podcast. Uh, your host, Mike Slane, joined by co-host David Dodge. Hey, guys. And a uh, special guest today, we have Megan Carew on. Hey, how are you? Megan, welcome to the show. Welcome, Megan. Uh, if you guys are first-time listeners, please, uh, we encourage you to go out and check out the free wholesalecourts.com. Uh, it's something that the Discount Property Investors have put together for you to learn how to get started in real estate. Uh, with basically no money down. So go check out freewholesalecourse.com uh, or go back and listen to our first uh, 10 episodes. We really cover a lot of the basics there, help you get started right away in real estate investing. Uh, so Megan, thanks for joining us. And uh, I guess we're just kind of here to to hear your story. Um, right, I mean, I don't know, Dave, what you wanna lead with some questions? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So Megan was, uh, she was kind of one of our uh, initial students Wow, you guys taught me before you actually started teaching. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Before we launched the the course. And yeah. Right. So we we you got in good because we weren't we didn't have a coaching program at that point in time, and you were uh, like you were one of our junior buyers. So essentially you were you were out in the field helping us buy properties, and uh, we were able to train you along the way. And you've had an awesome success story. And that's why we wanted to invite you on the on the show today. Right. So thanks for coming on. Um, how long have you been uh, been in real estate? Do you mind giving us a little bit of background on you know, how you got started in real estate and maybe share your struggles, how, you know, in the beginning, yeah. you, you know, to try to go the agent route and then you switched over to the investor route? Yeah, so literally, I guess it was last year, right? Um, I had twins in December and then I was just like, I don't want to go back to working at a bar. I don't want to go back to the service industry, but I really like people. Um, Nobody like approached me about becoming an agent. I was just um, thinking and like, oh, it seems like I can invest a little bit of money and make, you know, good money out of it. Mm -hmm. um, So I got my license and went through that whole. So did did you know anyone in real estate then? No. No, just out of the blue. Awesome. I just, oh, I'm going to invest in myself this year with my tax return because I got a lot of money back from from having so many kids that that year. (laughs) That's great. So I'm like, oh, I'll put this back into myself and um, went to school and learned it all. I signed on with a big big name here and a big name everywhere, I guess. Um, Who was the big name? Coldwell Banker, Gundaker. Okay. I literally went to the office every single day. I did everything my broker told me to do. I was there answering the phones. I was there going on um, appointments and doing, you know, following people and shadowing people. Um, I kind of found that some of the people higher up in there weren't as as nice as you were led you would to like, believe. Yeah, you would like them to be, or not as helpful as you would like them to be. But um, I still showed up every day and did my phone duty like twice as much as, as any other person who just started the same time I did. Right. Got nowhere, literally made no money in the first like four months there. So you, look, let's pause just for a second, I wanna slow down. So you got your license with your tax return money mm-hmm. and then why go, why Cobalt Banker? Did you shop around at different brokers or was it just around. the one that was right up the corner, right up the street on the corner from no. you or why did you choose them? Literally, because I didn't know anybody in real estate, and my mom was like, I would go with Cobalt Banker. I mean, if I thought about selling a house, I would sell a house with Cobalt Banker. Mm-hmm. Big name. Yeah, yeah. it's a mm-hmm. big name. And Everyone's as a them. newbie, I feel like uh, I get more recognized, like, you know. Brand recognition because yeah, you're in with the big company? Recognize me because I'm with a, a big company, and sure. I wasn't with a smaller company. So, and that really got me nowhere. And then one day I was on Facebook, imagine that, because I spend most of my time there. <laughs> um, and I saw Amy. Mm -hmm. posted something about hey my dad's you know starting this new company and they need JV buyers and I thought oh well I guess I mean I could always use an extra income I'm gonna go see what this is about so I had a meeting with Ray and he was like yeah sure you're on come be I literally had no I've never done a closing I've never actually sold a house Mm -hmm. I've only you know 
learned about it. Sure. So I really knew nothing. So let's back up one more time then. So for anyone who's just tuning in uh, for your first episode, Ray is one of the partners here at Discount Property Investor. Mm -hmm. And Amy is also, I mean, but one of the, yeah. the employees or partners here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Amy uh, was a friend of Megan's on Facebook mm -hmm. and just you saw one of her posts, reached out to her. Mm -hmm. I reached out to her. Well, actually, I reached out to her and she said, well, reach out to my dad. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, I've known Amy for a while, but I never like really knew Ray. Sure. So I reached out to him, made an appointment, came into the office here, and he was like, yeah, sure. So I went to my first couple meetings with you guys. I didn't know anything. You know, I said, <laughs> most of these terms like MAO, ARV, all that stuff, I had no <laughs> idea what any of those meant, and you guys were all pretty seasoned, it seemed. Um, there was a couple other guys that were here, and they seemed to have already been invested in this business mm -hmm. way more than myself. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm just going to keep showing up. Eventually, I guess I'll, I'll learn and I'll catch catch on, right? So then... That's huge, and I think that's one of the things that has really helped you get to where you're at and to right. be successful, because a lot of people don't just keep going. Right. And that is huge. And you even said when you were at uh, trying working as a real estate agent, you just kept, kept showing going. up yeah. and just kept showing up. Nothing happened. And unfortunately, yeah, that didn't didn't work right. out as well. Yeah. So how, like, how long were you were you there? Were you working so with Cole? I was a Cole banker for four or five months, and so I you think went, it wasn't until... Um, August, I switched over to Wood Brothers. Okay. And I just switched over with them because they were like, oh, well, do, you know, they're a smaller company. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do something with my license and they'll, they're a local company or, or whatever. But I really didn't, wasn't that invested at that point in time. I knew I was going to put more of my energy towards wholesaling. Right. So. And just being on the, working on the investment mm -hmm. side of the business. Yeah. So whenever you were working there, you, you said you did four, four to five months? Yeah. And you were just going in the office? Every single day. Going in, yeah. making answering calls, phones, answering yeah. phones, just waiting. Doing everything they told me to do, yeah. Right, waiting for somebody to come in for the most part off the street and say, mm -hmm. hey, I need you to list the home. Right, I set or up my buyer even. influence, set up my Facebook page, did everything they told me. So did you, told you, did to you do. do any deals though? I mean, at all when you were an agent there? I, I mean, mean, I went on listing listing. appointments, but of course my broker was like, oh, I can't show up with you. I've never been to a listing appointment. I'm a new agent. So you had no training for the most part? Pretty much, no. You know, I was just going to these appointments, not really knowing what I'm doing. They give you a big packet, flipping through the packet, trying to sell this marketing plan, which is like basically the same as every other company's marketing plan. They really, you know, in real estate, nobody really can do anything better because it's all dominated by the internet now. Yeah, there's well, and there's so many regulations too. I mean, you yeah. can't, yeah, right. I and mean, there's not, yeah, there's nothing really, I don't think, essential that makes you stand out. You list it, it goes on the MLS, it goes to 900 other sites, and nowadays and then consumers you just, you're choose. kind of an order taker at that point. Yeah, they choose from the internet. Somebody They're wants like, oh, to make an offer. Zillow. I yeah. saw this. Mm -hmm. It's not really right. anything that makes you stand out. Yeah, the industry is changing, though. Like, it's been mm -hmm. very, very <laughs> slow, and the fact that agents are still around is uh, fascinating, I think, right. that they're so sticky. Um, that, anyways, I don't know. I kind of digress on that because right. it is. It's very Well, it was a lot different 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, you know, I mean, right. they had they had big old packets of properties that they would look through. They would look through and then they show you, hey, these ones valuable. you might be interested. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it's it's definitely a changing industry. Right. And uh, I think I just shared some article about that, actually, um, how the, the real estate agent commission is just so sticky. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Kind of getting digressing. So Megan's story, though. But yeah. You didn't. I wasn't I mean, making any money. So yeah, I came here and um, Luckily, you Similar guys were Similar story. Yeah. Weren't making any money. I wasn't it making any money. It wasn't overnight. But I was getting leads mm -hmm. um, from you guys. And I was lucky enough to have you and you and Ray go on appointments with me and mm -hmm. see how you guys all work and how you talk to these people. Obviously, we all do it a different, you know, everybody does it a different way. Well, this is the deal. And sure. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, you got to be yourself. You're trying to connect with another person. Right. So right. Just, yeah, there's, right. No, there's, no, there's no script when yeah. it comes to talking I mean, to I people. I mean, I can tell you... Building rapport. Yeah, straight up. When I go on, when I went on that one appointment with you, I could right away tell you that you were more into pleasing the seller and making the seller happy. When I go on appointments with Ray, he grunts a lot and points a lot at, at things. Mm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ray the Rhino, then, go back and, and check he, out episode two. Yeah. <laughs> it's like kind of a mystery. Like you can see it on these people's faces. Like this guy, what is what's going on in his yeah, life? What's he? And then he gets what's to the he bottom line. Here, he's right. like, I can only offer you fifty thousand dollars for this house. Yeah. And they're like, they either take it or they don't. And uh, what I kind of learned from him is you move on. They don't like it. You move on. Move you come on. back, see if they want to take it again in a couple months. 
they don't, you move on. What's well, mm. a valuable lesson though, too? Because it is a numbers game, mm -hmm. I and mean, we're in a people business, but it's a numbers game. You have to filter through uh, enough sellers to find one that's actually motivated. Right. Right. And if you so. start chasing, you're going to end up buying at a retail price mm -hmm. too. You have to. Right. And that's got to be woman. firm on your on your offers. Right. That's the woman in me. I'm I'm more of a people pleaser. I'm like I want to help these people. You can see some of these people are like especially short sale people or people who are like going through a divorce, you can see that they're hurting. So you're like, I really want to take this property from you and I really want to make you happy, but I can't. Right. You know, I've I'm heard this investor. several times and it, it's, it's, it stands true today, but if you're not embarrassed with your offer, it's probably too high. Right. You know I mean? And let me tell you, when it I'm comes to, when it comes to <laughs> buying mm -hmm. at a wholesale price, you know, or even just getting a property at a really good price, the offer has to be so low that you know sometimes it's embarrassing to even say, "Hey, I'll give you fifty grand for this house." When, in all reality, it may be worth eighty or ninety. And right. If you're gonna make money in the middle, you gotta get it cheap. You right. Know? That's ex that's. I mean, that's what everybody else is doing. That's what you do when you wholesale clothes. That's what you do when you wholesale anything else. Right. So, mm -hmm. what? Why would it be different with houses now? I don't necessarily go into appointments saying my plan is to sell your property for. You know, ten thousand dollars more than I'm buying it for right now. Right. But if there's the need there, if they need to get out of it, if it's if they're desperate enough, and and it's a good enough offer, and they're coming out ahead, maybe five thousand dollars ahead. Maybe they're just coming out paying off their loan. But you know, right. you can, you can see Yeah, I mean, as long as you create the win-win-win, right. it doesn't really matter. You know, it, it a lot of times the level of motivation with them isn't. Is, it's not a financial motivation. Right. It's, it's a weight. A, it's a burden. It's a weight. Right. Exactly. So if you can take the weight off of them, and at the same time you're able to make a financial gain, right. you know, and then also tee up a rehabber or a landlord with their next deal, right. you know, you you, all, you can still create that win-win-win. And that's something that I really want to stress to the listeners and the viewers, you know, and I've said this multiple times in previous podcasts, but, you know, you, you still want to look for that win-win-win. I'm not saying that if somebody came to me and they said they want to give me a house, I wouldn't take it. You know, obviously I'd say, okay, let's, let's maybe see what some we can houses do. aren't worth nothing. Some houses aren't worth anything. <laughs> right. That's it's so true. That's so North true. City. Yeah. But yeah. whenever I'm out on the appointment, like you said, you know, I usually try to build rapport with the seller. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's two things that I think that I do pretty well. Is one, I let them know immediately that I'm an investor. I don't pay retail. Right. Period. Right. You know, when I walk in the door, you know, on appointments nowadays, I I straight up tell them, you know, this is. What I this is this is who I am. You know, I'm an investor. I don't pay retail, but then I'll I'll you know follow that up with. However, you know I'm I'm here to help. You know, right. although I'm not going to give you the best number for, you know, for this particular property. You know, I'm here to lift that weight off your shoulders. So if this is something that you're just ready to be done with. You know, in a house could need 80 grand worth of work. I don't care. Right. You know, I'll still buy it. You know, and I'll help you out and take this off of your shoulders. Yeah. You know, so. You are creating that win-win. Yeah. So, but let's get back to um, to you and your endeavors. So, you did four to five months, you know, at this other job. You didn't have any success. Mm -hmm. You're going in every day, yeah. spending a couple hours at minimum, I would imagine. Yeah, going home every night, taking care of literally like a son that was two years old and, and infants, or a son that's one years old and infants at the time. So, right. it was a lot, you know. It's a ton. Like, this is talk. not paying off. I put all, you know, all this money towards it and nothing was coming out of it. So right. it's like, I've got to think of something different to do. Talk about being persistent, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have made it four to five months without making any money. Yeah, because oh, you were going sucks. in every day, yeah. you know, busting your... I mean, even with this, I, I didn't necessarily make it, but I felt more potential here. Oh, of course. Not at first, I didn't get a deal in the first month. I didn't get a deal in the first two months. I mean, at the time, I, I didn't have the time to invest because... I still had to go back home and take care of the kids of and do this, paying for babysitters expensive. Absolutely. So, I mean, I was working maybe one or two days a week coming into the office mm -hmm. and, and you know, just getting it out there. I mean, I just kind of told a lot of people, like, I'm in this business. This is what I'm doing now. I mean, yeah, if you have a house and you want me to list it, I would love to do that because I still have a real estate license. But I'm not really into retail as much because um, it's, it's more of a people-pleasing thing, getting buyers, you're driving around. It's just not really... It's more of a waste of my time, well, actually. It's, it's people a, who are seeking me out to buy their properties or people who need me there. You're going to create of, more value there. Right. right. Yeah, I'm more valuable as a wholesaler than I was Being a successful agent. real estate agent is very, very difficult. It's very competitive. Mm -hmm. And you have to spend a lot of money in marketing. And, and really the ones 
there's two agents, I guess three, that really stick out in my mind that are that have made a, a really successful career. I know a lot of agents that pay their bills, of course. There's two or three that, that stick out in my mind that have made a really successful career in real estate, and every one of them has been doing it for over 20 years. Right. You know, so it's like to build to build a business that actually is going to pay you, you know, a good. I'm talking a good amount of money. Mm -hmm. You know, several several six figures. You know, you got to be doing it 20, 25, maybe even 30 years, yeah. and build that reputation up to where, you know, everyone just knows that you're doing it. But if you just jump in and you're in your first year, your third year, even your fifth year, it's very difficult to be successful in that business because there's so much competition out there, right. and it, you don't, you know, you don't have as much brand recognition. And um, most of these women or and people who are doing it too, like that I found that started at the same time, they were you know, had husbands, a lot of them were older, they had husbands who supported them mainly financially right. or whatever. They weren't it's a lot of part time agents on, there's on a, the paychecks. Yeah, that, that that's, was, there's a huge part time uh, percentage, I would say, of agents. I yeah. think almost all, I mean, they, I'd say the majority yeah, of them majority are part time. Agents, I think are part time. Right. Or just have at least another job if you mm -hmm. want to, you know, look at it that way. Right. Yeah. So I found more value in wholesaling than I did in, in being an, than being an agent. So I just decided to put more attention to that, even though, yeah, I didn't make any money in my first couple months um, and whatever, I just was persistent. I showed up every time, I went on appointments. Again, I was learning from nothing. I'd never closed a house, I'd never bought a house myself. Right. I don't know really <laughs> anything about, I never knew anything about real estate really. So let's jump ahead. So, and thank you for sharing all this information with uh, with you know me and Mike, as well as all the listeners and the viewers here. Um, so you, let's jump ahead. So you, you found the add-on on Facebook that Amy had posted, or I guess just the post, mm -hmm. just saying, hey, you know, my dad's starting a new company, we're looking to take on some um, junior buyers. Yeah. So you contacted Amy, you met with Ray. So then, you know, let's let's talk so about yeah. what happened next. Yeah, I went to my first couple of meetings. There seemed to be like a good rapport. I was like, yeah, this is definitely where I wanna be. Uh, cool. These guys are awesome, I'm, you know, everything makes sense to me, I just really need to learn more about mm -hmm. it. And like you said, when you came into the first couple of meetings, you didn't really know a lot of the things that we were talking about with right. the, the different properties. Google was my best friend. Right. I think I Googled <laughs> a lot of stuff after every meeting. Right. Not that I was not afraid to reach out to you guys and ask, but I was already asking you a lot of questions. Sure, which you sure. Weren't, you know, opposed to answering, but sometimes I'm like, will it be stupid if I ask him what MAL means? Because it seems like everybody else knows what that means but me. Right. So I just figured it out. Hey, you out figured it out own. though. You did great. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, yeah, I kept coming back. I know, like again, in the first two months I was here, I think one of the guys left. And I was like, dang, does he not see the potential in this? But he's, I guess he saw like some personal issues. So I just kept coming back and kept coming back. And, and I guess it's kind of like real estate. Some people, don't show up every day and some people do show up every day. I didn't have the luxury to show up every day because if I had no kids and, and could put 110% into this and be here every day from right. nine to six, I would have been. Right. But because I didn't, it took me a little bit longer. I mean, it, if you were here every day, you probably could close a deal in your first month. If you're doing this and working it like a full-time job, you could, right. but I didn't. So I wasn't opposed, you know, hey, you, it was gonna take me a longer stretch. It, you know what though, you're still here. Right. And, and you've been with, the company for you're not an employee of the company, but you are you know a junior buyer and yeah. associate of the company, and you've been with the company for I don't know seven, six, seven months. Yeah, yeah. Give or take. Well, yeah. Probably at least six months. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say something like that. Um, but you know, just the fact that you were persistent, mm -hmm. I think, is right. one of the biggest lessons that I'd like the listeners and viewers to take away. Absolutely. You know, anything in life that you know is going to be highly rewarding isn't going to be easy. It's not going to come easy. You're going to have to work hard for it. Right. And if you give up, then you're gonna, you know, you're never gonna be able to reach those goals. Right. Like so the fact that you kept coming in, you know, I want to commend you. The fact that you kept coming in, and you know, whenever we saw that you weren't going away, yeah. th at that I mean, point, we're like, okay, you know, here, let's give, let's start giving her more and more leads. Right. Well, it's true. We've had we had conversations. We said, man, Megan's really persistent. She's trying to figure it out. We need to get her more leads. We need to get right. her paid. Right. Like we need to get her. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that makes is. a she's, big difference. She's got the tenacity, so let's let's get her paid. So let's talk about that then. Let's talk about your first deal. So I mean, describe uh, kind of how that happened. So my first deal was actually a girl I met at Coldwell Banker, Gundaker. Um, when I so it wasn't a complete waste. It wasn't a complete oh, waste. There you, go. there you go. When I first started, there was a girl that worked with me. She started, I don't know, a month or two before mm -hmm. I did. And um, 
I had Sol Ray's thing and I was going through all the JV buyers thing and I was like, oh, I'm gonna start working for this investment company. So lo and behold, I don't know, six, seven months later, she calls me up and says, my aunt's sick. Are you still working for that investment company? Um, I need people to come see your house. Um, cash buyers, she can't go up and downstairs and they need to get rid of it quickly. I already bought a condo and they're closing on it and at the end of the month. So I need to do a double close on the, on the day. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go look at it. Ended up, um, I went with Ray because it was close to where we both live. He was like, oh, I don't know if we're gonna make any money on this deal, you know, um, or whatever. But I was like, oh, I feel like there's good potential in, in this area, it's Baldwin, so in St. Louis, it's pretty, it's a pretty good area, good school district, so. Um, we ended up buying it, what did we buy it at? 168? Okay. Plus, we paid $1,000 to Maggie for giving us the lead because she was an agent or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, we ended up wholesaling it for 182. So that was a good profit there. That's a great profit. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. um, you know, I was like, heck yeah. Really got motivated then. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so I guess when people really do need this service, they will come find me. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a, I really have to, I mean, yeah, it's good to be proactive and seek them out, but when they really need you, they'll, they'll ask, they'll ask, hey, I heard, weren't you doing that? Aren't you buying houses? Yeah, that's there? absolutely true. Right. The more times you tell your network that, hey, I'm a, I'm an investor now, right? it sinks in, and eventually when they need you, they're going to find you. I mean, right. I have people reach out to me, I don't know, once a month or so mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. ask you, hey, are you still, are you buying houses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last, are you selling houses too? I mean, it's like, right. hey, do you have anything? I'm some friends that are rehabbers yeah. too. Yeah, you don't want to keep your so, business a secret. Uh, right. You want to let people know what you do. Anyways, I got that, what is it, $5,000 check, and I was like, heck yeah, like this made all those months of struggling worth it. Like if I can get one check like this a month, I'll be fine. It'd be great, mm -hmm. you absolutely. Know? If I could do more than that, I'll be more than fine, you know? <laughs> right. But, you know, as for now, it's like, let's, keep, let's, let's keep my goals realistic here sure. and, and try to shoot for one or two closings a month. Why mm -hmm. couldn't I shoot for that? So then the next month, I actually, well, actually I bought this house a long, like a couple months before. Um, it was a lead mm -hmm. that you guys had gave to me and it was in Valley Park and I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, the potential, I, you know, I thought, I thought, man, I really got down because we really were hard, having a hard time finding a buyer for it. Mm. So we had a buyer that pulled out. I remember. I think yeah. we maybe even had two that pulled out. Yeah. We had, yeah. But we had a, such a good deal on that one. I remember that particular deal. It was such a good deal that we had, meaning that we, we were buying it for so low that we took the risk of just closing on it with our own funds because we, we knew, mm -hmm. hey, we're not, you know, we've had a little trouble with some of the buyers you know, saying they would buy it and then pulling out, but because we were able to get it so low, we had pretty much minimized our risk. Right. To where we knew, hey, you know, as a company, we knew, hey, we, we know that we're getting this at such a good deal that we will at least break even on it. Yeah, we even, won't lose. Well, we knew it was a little bit of an odd house, and we knew that, but it was right. still, it was just such a good price that we right. were just going to So I remember that. Right. So that was that your second or third deal? That was my second that one. was your second one. Okay, yeah. I remember that. And we, we ended up closing on it, and then, you know, two, three weeks later, we able to sell that yeah, one. Yeah. There's a good and profit was, on that one too. Let me tell you, if they if they tell you um, as a junior buyer or whatever, all you do is get the house under contract or whatever, I'm not like that. I always follow up on my on my houses. I was out there like I put a note on the door. If you have any trouble getting in, you know, call me. I was I was right down the street. Mm -hmm. So and I had the hardest time with the key of this this house. Mm -hmm. I literally was there all the time. I ended up actually finding the buyer for the house, a guy that was doing rehabs in the area that I knew was trying to sell rehab up the street. And, you know, it was just being persistent. And that same day that I took that buyer to the house, we were about to settle for 27. And I got him to sign for 36. I remember that. Five yeah. or something like that. Hashtag yeah. hustle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, wait, don't, don't accept that contract. <laughs> no, that's right. You, you did, you put in a lot of work and, uh, and you earned it. Right. You know, you, you worked your, you worked your, your rear off. But on that, that was, deal. Yeah, that was the hardest one. The other one was like easy. It was like, oh. <laughs> right. Literally. Well, and some of them are easy. That's right. what, that's another thing to point out to the listeners. I mean, some wholesale transactions just kind of fall together and they're super right. easy. Mm -hmm. And some of them are more of a, a challenge where you really are working yeah. a lot more to create the win-win. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a very good point. So we've said this in, in previous episodes too. You know, wholesaling is, is, is very simple. The business of wholesaling is simple, but it's not always easy. Some of these deals are very difficult 
to a lot of them are a lot of them are you know when it comes to all the logistics of what has to happen but there are those deals that can both be simple right. and easy mm -hmm. and those are the best they're fun yeah. they're fun yeah, that's when it's fun. you know it's fun i mean i've had and I'm, I'm not trying to steal the show here but i've had situations where i've been able to sell houses off two or three text messages right. and those are so fun you know and and, and, I, and i'm not even saying that those were you know super profitable deals but i remember one deal in particular that I had gotten an email from another wholesaler and I had a buyer had called me like a day prior. It was like, hey, I'm looking in this neighborhood, you know, this is what I'll pay. And I and literally the deal, it was like the it's like the clouds opened up and the sun came down. The deal was emailed to me. It was right. the craziest thing. I texted the buyer and I said, Hey, I got this deal, you know, go look at it. And I had previously had called the other wholesaler and he's like, Yeah, we'll do a split on it. I think I made like 600 bucks or 700 bucks on the deal, but I sent one text message. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, I spent 45 seconds working on that deal and you know, three hours later he calls me back and says, hey, I'll take it. Right. No negotiations, just done. That's what, well. And I was just like, okay, that's cool. Simple and easy, but it doesn't often happen that way though. Yeah, that other one wasn't that simple or easy because, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, not that one, but the Baldwin one that okay. I made a good one on that was definitely more simple than the other one. Right. Um, but it's just because the lady was ill, so we had to get everybody in at one time. But I could tell, like you can tell, um, I'd never actually done an open house, I guess, for a wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. But um, you could tell who was interested and who wasn't. And then there was this one guy, and he was just lingering outside, and him and Ray were talking and talking and talking. That's our buyer. Right. And he um, wanted it. Yeah. And Ray's like, actually, I already, I, we uh, did a deal the other day. Or, a couple months ago. Sure, he knew him. Yeah, and he made yeah. fifty. They, the, the flip guy made fifty-two thousand dollars off that. But, it's, but that's the win-win-win that yeah. we're always talking about, you know. Yeah. We made a little bit in the middle there. You helped the 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 you know the elderly lady that you said was sick. Mm -hmm. You know, you helped her with her her issue. You just, right. She probably didn't care. Oh, she was. Stubborn. She just wanted to get rid of the damn house. <laughs> well, Megan, and then the rehabber, you know, pulled away a good profit. Yeah. I'm gonna rewind just a bit because we we don't think we've covered uh, doing open houses for I was a wholesale deal, mm -hmm. uh, and that is something that our partner. I mean, he does it pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, so we, it's a uh, well, Megan. You want to cover it? So does it oftentimes before the even has the contract on the house. Well, let's not get into that, yeah. but that's enough. That's the other part. Right? Let's talk about the, um, the open house for so yeah, a wholesale. I guess, uh, we, we just put it up on the website or and send out text to all the buyers that we know who would be interested in that area and tell them, hey, Saturday at 1 o'clock till 2 o'clock, come in. If you want to see this property, you can. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you get the pictures on the internet because this lady's sick, she can't afford for people to come in and out. So then we talk to the lady and of course we're not like, we're bringing potential buyers to your house. We're like, we're gonna have contractors and partners come through to look at the house um, from one to two if that's okay. She couldn't leave the house so she stayed in one room. Right. And that was fun. Yeah, so typically when you do an open house, it, it's whenever the house is occupied. It doesn't have to be. We've done, we've done open houses on properties that were vacant. Right. Um, but we usually have, would have limited showing access. Right. Yeah, that's you know, if you can get a lockbox, great. You don't necessarily need to, to try to funnel people through at a specific time and day. Right. They didn't so care about the lock. Sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, so that's the main reason why you would do an open house is if you have limited access. And a lot of times your seller is going to be a little bit stubborn or can be a little bit stubborn about putting a lockbox on it. Mm -hmm. So you set up a time and then you'll kind of coordinate. Right. Just like Megan had said, right. uh, to get a time for all your your partners to come through the property. Right. Yeah, so. and they didn't necessarily care about the lockbox on the property, but it was more of a she's sick. How inconvenient would it be for us to say, "Hey, it's twelve o'clock on Wednesday. I know she's ill. Can we have somebody come through?" And you know, and whatever. So we just so we did have a lockbox on it, but it ended up working out. This two hour period that we had, we found a buyer right then and there, and yeah. and we knew it before we even. Well, and there's there's where you're adding value too, though. I mean, this woman doesn't want people coming in the house right. a bunch, so you said, okay, we're going to get it done right here. Right. But the reason you're able to do that is because you got it at a price that made sense for you as an investor. So it's a win for you, win for your buyer, win for that lady. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's all about creating win win wins. Yeah. yeah. So it was great. It was awesome. a great deal, and yeah, I was happy to help him out. Now, which one was this? Ball one. This is the Baldwin one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember that one. Yeah. And that's like literally cool. you could tell you could tell the guy was out there talking to Ray and I was like, Oh, that's gonna that's gonna be our buyer. <laughs> right. Hey. <laughs> well Megan, tell us a little bit about where you're headed now, because I think this is kind of one of the more exciting things um kind Absolutely. Of the ideas you came up with. Absolutely. You uh I mean kind of, tell tell me what, what happened. I mean so you, 
mm-hmm. you were doing deals, and then you just got so excited about I need to do some marketing. Right. I mean, that I was, was that yeah. was I was like, nice. She got it. She's right. Getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that the paradigm, you know, shifted where you're like, listen, real, you know, real estate is the product that right. we're buying and selling. But I'm in the marketing business, and I can continue to be persistent and come in the office, and you know, these, you know, the discount property investors are going to give me leads. And I'm going to continue to take those leads. Right. But I'm going to go get my own leads. Right. I get a bigger split. Right. I'm yeah. making more money. And so I can do more deals. All right. So right. tell your tell your story. Both of us were excited for you. Right. There. So, <laughs> so I guess I approached you guys and asked if it was okay because I didn't want to step on any toes. I'm like, hey, you know, is it okay if I do some of my own marketing? Absolutely. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking of doing like this girl buys houses and like this girl, you know. Um, and a little stick figure with curly hair and just, you know, putting putting some signs up, some bandit signs or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, like, you could just see in, like, especially Bill's face, the excitement. I think Mike was like, okay, Bill, you got you to gotta calm down. <laughs> well, Bill's, Bill's our visionary, and he loves ideas. So he when does. a good idea pops up, he, he does. He lights up. Right. So I was like, okay, yeah, so I'm going to start doing some marketing. So um, me and Amy were just talking, and we're like, oh, we'll just make this our own thing. So we're just talking and bouncing ideas off of each other, and I guess we just noticed a pa- pattern of our family and friends and everybody we know, actually, man, woman, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a side hustle. Right. Everybody's trying to make extra money. They're driving an Uber on Friday and Saturday nights or, you know, or whatever. You're, you're uh, refereeing soccer games during the summer. I don't know what, but everybody does something else for extra money. And a household right now can't even rely on two incomes. If you have three kids and two people working full time, it's still really hard it's to tough. make it Absolutely. prosper in this economy. So um, I just started thinking like, this is something that women can make money off of. How can I convince other women that this is profitable, right? Of course. So I was like, thinking and doing some research into some direct sales companies. I've got a lot of friends that work for some of them and and one particular was uh, it's a skincare company and they We won't mention any names. Yeah. Of yeah the we're not ma- we're not mentioning names. But um, in fine print at the very bottom it says the average uh, distributor doesn't make more than uh, $1200 a year annually. Annually, yeah. So and they have to pay money to join and this paying, program. And these, and women are paying from what's it, three hundred to six hundred to nine hundred dollars to to become a distributor, become a distributor. Or, or buy the products to then distribute, mm-hmm. and that's how a lot of the multi-level marketing companies are. And I'm not here to bash them; that's no. not my intent. Um, but I know a lot of people. I actually had a um, a guy send he sent you the email too, I think, Mike. But he sent an email just two days ago about a new you know, a new program for these gift cards, and it looked cool. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to be negative, but I'm just like, listen, you know, whenever you don't focus on something and you're constantly jumping from, you know, one shiny object to the next shiny object, you're never going to be good and successful, you know, at, you know, at at something, you know, right. something that you want that you want to be good at. So this was someone else who we we had brought in uh, to the team and tried to help in real estate, and now is coming back and saying, hey, right. would you guys be interested in this? And right. I think that stays. So my point was though focused. is that I said, listen, I said I'm not against this. You know, this looks cool, but I am not interested until I can see you produce five to ten thousand dollar checks, you know, for several months in a row because a lot of these MLMs, they're a huge time suck. Mm-hmm. You know, they get you real excited and they'll show you all these things that a couple people are doing. That are the top people, you know. Essentially, the, right. the CEO and founder walks away with billions of dollars. Right, he's doing great, and everybody else is making, you know, eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars right. a year busting buying their, cruise ships for busting his their butt. And mm-hmm. then those people who are buying, right. who are selling the products, also are buying tickets to his cruise. Ship. Right, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> so back to back to the, the the ones that you were looking into. <laughs> so I was looking into all these companies, and I just like there's got to be a better way for like women to make money. I know the appeal of. I mean, literally, I I am on Facebook and my newsfeed is full of these people selling these things if it's not if it's from wine to skincare to to anything right and I'm like there's just got to be a better way so I just started thinking and I'm like there's six degrees of separation right I mean from six people from you you know somebody famous six people from you you know somebody who's a murderer why can't it be like six people from you you know somebody who's a cash buyer right yeah I like that so um and essential, it's, yeah, we'll take a lead from anybody because I guess paying out a bunch of money in marketing is great and, and that's prospect marketing to a, a big bunch of people, but but for me not to have to pay for the lead until I actually get it under contract, that would be ideal, right? Right. 
So um, to get these people to brand themselves with me and have to do little work. So what can I do to just to get them to give me a name? So if I can get girls to sign up and say they're, you know, they're this girl buys houses and Pastor Larry's um, sister dies. And you know, all they've been doing is making Facebook posts is, hey, if you ever need me, um, I buy houses for cash, you know, they're handing out their cards or, you know, doing something at local community, talking to everybody, just telling them like, yeah, I'm buying houses for cash. It's not really going to Pastor Larry after his uh, sister died, let me buy that house for cash. But when he needs you and you're available, you're six degrees from him or, you know, right. you're right there. Right. So um, it's just that idea of branding yourself with our company. So anybody can bring me a lead. I'll pay 500 bucks if I buy it. But if someone brings me, if someone wants to brand themselves with my company and be a This Girl Buys Houses, I'll pay them out 20% of my profits, which is a good amount, you know. It's an awesome deal. Of, yeah, absolutely. Of money. So it's... Well, 20% and you're talking mm -hmm. about you are still doing the majority of the work, right? I'm still doing all the work. Right. So, I mean, that's a huge, right. huge right. referral fee, essentially, right. for anyone who wants to help This Girl Buys Houses by being a This Girl Buys Houses. Right. right. I mean, that's essentially I, idea, Well, I like right? how you're giving them two options, too. You know, it's like if you don't want to do anything, you don't even want, you know, to be branded and you just want to give me the lead, you know, you'll essentially give them yeah. five, 500 bucks in, in the event that you buy the house. So. Right. You're creating a win-win there too because you're getting leads, you're being able to pay people to give you those leads, and they're not you're not requiring them to do anything. Right. And on the flip side of that is, if they want to make more money and become more involved and more invested, then they can make more money. Right. And essentially, twenty percent they can make, you know. And say it they could bring be me a lead. Any amount of money. Right. right. Say they bring me a lead, and I just say, hey, you can either take this five hundred bucks. Or I'm going to offer you um, this Girl Buys Houses branding kit, which is a box essentially with things that help market yourself to your family and friends, a shirt, a cup, a, you know, cards, a magnet, and, um, and then you can get 20% of everything I make. So you're essentially investing in yourself, which is a really good investment for the initial investment, what you're getting, and then what you get out of it. Even if, you, even if one deal you did 20% on, you would make more than than most people do all year in direct in direct sales. In direct one, sales. Off of yeah. one deal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to me that these MLM companies, you know, the average person's making 11, 12, yeah, I mean, again, 1300 dollars. I'd have to look up the statistics. That's an I imagine annual yeah. amount, yeah. Yeah. Right. you know? I imagine it's pretty low. It's, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's pretty low and these people are hustling and a lot of them are, and again, you have it in every business, shiny objects. A lot of people get in, don't, don't do it. Or you get in and you think, oh, I'm only paying this amount of money to start. And then they're like, oh, well, we're going to hit you with a website fee for $20 a month. And you're like, well, I don't have any money. I'm broke as heck. That's why I'm trying to make money. <laughs> right. And, you know, like with This Girl Buys Houses, we're not asking anything. We're asking 500 bucks. We're here for you. We're giving you cards. We're, you know, you give us leads. We'll pay you out 20%. We're trying to make it super easy for you by just entering in your information, um, the lead information, and, and getting money. Right. And so yeah. it's little work. No, it's a, it's a really good idea for yeah. sure. I mean, it definitely, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we both got excited for you because it is. It's, it's, right. a, it's yeah. an exciting I idea. I think what, what it makes me the most excited is just that you took the initiative mm -hmm. to go out and create something, work hard and build it to create your own leads. Right. You know, we're going to continue to give you leads because you continue to show up. Right. You know, which is the most important thing. You are super persistent. And you're consistent. You know, those are two two you know things that are very very important. But the fact that you said, "Hey, I want to build my own business," you know, on top of your guys' business, is a win. You've you've essentially created a win win for us, mm -hmm. right? And for yourself, and for yourself. And for yourself. Right. That's my that's what I'm saying. So you know, you now have people that you're going to be able to pay for leads. They're going to be able to give you those leads to where you can go work those. You know, and then we'll help you sell those. So it, again, it's all about the win-win. Yeah, and some of these women, maybe they, you know, they're they're. Some of these women are more eager to learn about the whole process. And that's than, great than, too. And, and it's a lot. It really is. It took me a while to learn. It is a lot. <clears throat> Was I the free wholesale course mm -hmm. helpful? Yeah, I know. Ev yeah, I know. Everybody doesn't have the time to invest in learning the whole thing. That's why I'm trying to make it easy for stay-at-home mom. Um, you know, sister who's in school mm -hmm. to make extra money off of this business because it is profitable and whatever. But when people do want to learn, yeah, I'm, I'm sending them to you guys because it's like, oh, you want to learn what wholesaling is all about? 
go to freewholesalecommerce.com. Right. You know, check these guys out. Listen to the podcast. Learn everything that you can because the more knowledgeable you are in this business, the better you're off. And right. The better off you are. So. Yeah. Well, we, we appreciate you, Megan. I mean, you've been one of our biggest advocates as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, absolutely. We hope to keep. I mean, seeing you grow and and do well. I hope I, mean, I grow too, guys. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. do. You're I mean, gonna do just it's fine. A, it's a great idea. I mean, yeah, it's you're gonna, gonna blow do up. just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're really proud of you, Megan. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, yeah, do you want to pull? I mean, obviously, they can go to uh, Facebook and find This Girl Buys Houses. This Girl Buys Houses. Um, if you have any leads to put in, you can go to This Girl Buys Houses LLC.com and put your leads in. Um, awesome. If you're interested in more, yeah, find me on Facebook and message us. Reach out to us. We're Great. Here. Yeah, we'll put the contact info in the show notes. So if you guys are interested in reaching out to Megan, uh, I mean, currently this girl buys houses is only in St. Louis, but obviously yeah. that's going to change. We can franchise. Yeah, that's right. That's going <laughs> to change soon too. We're going worldwide. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Megan, you want to wrap up with uh, a quote, a closing quote for us today? Please. Um, yeah, sure. Make your marketing so useful people would pay for it. So I guess that's the uh, the end goal of this girl buys houses. We want you to pay for it. That's but right. you're going to profit. So You're going to make money in the process. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, guys, for listening. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thanks in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.